Hey there, everybody. I was watching a video the other day, and it got me thinking. It's this video here by Ryan Gallmeyer. My apologies, Ryan, if I just goofed up your your uh, last name there. When in doubt, pronounce it like it's German. Anyway, so we had this video about Dr. Braxton Hunter struggling with definitions of key terms. And the definition of, of human free will is what is at issue um, at the core of this video that Ryan has. This isn't really meant to be a response to Ryan. I'm just going to build on what I what I saw in this video. And I think Ryan's got this correct. Um, I agree with what he's saying here, that uh, synergistic Christians claiming that human free will is defined as the power of contrary choice. choice. The Bible teaches something completely different, and I think he's correct. Uh, free will is a will that never asserts uh, sorry, assents to any erroneous, false, or lying propositions as if they were true, and a will that never wills to do anything other than that which is good and well-pleasing to God. And Jesus was the only free human being with a truly free human will, whoever walked the earth. I, I agree totally with these thoughts here. And it got me thinking about the end goal of the Christian life. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of presentations from folks like um, Braxton Hunter, which I haven't seen a lot of his stuff, but you know, other people you might see uh, online stressing human free will. I think they're missing the point. So we, we see what Jesus says in John 8. Um, it's just a portion here. We're going to have a couple of different scriptures that we're going to bounce around to. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The Son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So this freedom that we have to look forward to in Christ. And, you know, we know that as we live here on earth, well, we still sin, don't we? And in 1 John, we see that that's the case. If we walk in the this is chapter 1, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So we know that we're still dealing with sin. Uh on this side of glory. And we see that also in um, Philippians uh, 1 6. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This is uh, Paul writing to the Philippians that you're being sanctified. This is what we call sanctification. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So in the Christian life, God is working in you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. So the things that you get right, God is working in you to do those good things. We still sin, as we just saw in 1 John. But what are we looking forward to? So staying in 1 John, going to chapter 3, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. He's speaking of Christ's second coming there. And that's a beautiful thing. We'll see Christ as he is, because we shall be like him, right? And if we're like him, we will be truly free. We will not sin at all. And in 1 Corinthians 15, depending on your eschatology, you might spend a lot of time in this passage. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, 
Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So at Christ's second coming, we're going to be like him. We're going to be perfected. We're going to be putting on the imperishable. We're going to be putting on immortality. That's awesome, right? So that means there'll be no more sinning. You will not sin anymore. So my question is, when is it that your will is truly free? Is it now when you get caught up in sin, even as a Christian? What about the non-Christian? Does that person have a free will? Of course not. There are outside influences. Um, there's temptations, and then they succumb to those because they want to. And as Christians, we sin because we want to. If we look at Romans 7, I'm not going to go there now, but if we go to Romans 7, um, if Paul is speaking about the Christian life where we still struggle with sinning from time to time, if we do what we don't want and we, w we want, we don't do, if that's what's going on, can we say that we're truly free yet? But we already are children of God now. And we will be like Christ on the day of his appearing. And it's then that we're truly free. It's then that we'll have a free will. We won't sin anymore. That is freedom. That is true freedom. So it makes no sense to me to talk about free will and how I have to be free to be able to make the wrong choice. Why is that? Um, Jesus said in chapter 8 of John that anyone who sins is a slave to sin, right? Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. How can you say that you're free then? I think this this fellow, Ryan, over here, is right. I think that um, a will that never assents to any erroneous, false, or lying propositions as if it were true, and a will that never wills to do anything other than that which is good and well-pleasing to God, is truly free. And we have that to look forward to in eternity with Christ. Otherwise, if we continue with this, con this line of thinking from the synergistic camp, we're going to end up thinking that we are not free in Christ in eternity. Well, we can only do what's right then. We can only do the righteous things. Well, that's actual freedom. That's actual freedom when we only obey God all the time. There'll be no question of it. There's no chance that you will fall into sin in eternity. That's a good thing. That's true freedom. All right, well, I think I left enough for you to chew on, and I hope you're having a great day in the Lord.